Good evening and welcome to the Michael Jack Pazden Show, live to you from the Two Sweet Studios in beautiful Riverside, Napa. Uh, I have with me tonight Lindsay Huntsman here joining us. <laughs> Lindsay, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm standing next to you. Uh, I, <laughs> I work at El Dorado Kitchen in Sonoma. I'm a restaurant manager. Michael and I met at the Lodge up in Calcerga, where he was a phenomenal bartender and taught me a lot about cocktails. Um, Not about me, Lindsay, about you. Um, <laughs> I like food, I like wine, and I love living in Napa Valley. And more importantly, that. Lindsay had no idea that she was coming here to be on camera tonight until approximately 25 seconds ago. But she was recruited just to make this more verite a la minute to be my assistant for this evening. And this evening's theme is, of course, holiday cocktails. We've got quite a few people here in the studio tonight. We've been hanging out, drinking. We're going to eat some beautiful food later on. But... For the time being, we're talking about holiday cocktails and holiday entertaining. A few secrets that I'd like to tell you about, and we're going to be making a punch later on. But first, I want to tell you the number one, my number one rule for the holidays. It's something that I learned from air travel. Now, you know when you're on an airplane and they give you that speech at the beginning of your trip, which nobody ever listens to. I personally usually fall asleep by the time the speech is over. Fasten the seatbelts like this, the exits are here and here, that sort of thing. But if you do listen, they have this part about the little droppy down bags that are there to keep you alive when there's no oxygen in the plane. Now they will tell you how to fix them to your face and tell you also that if there is a young child or an elderly person next to you, do not try to fix their bags before affixing your own because you may pass out and die before you're able to affix their bags. As in air travel, the same with the holidays. It is important to take care of yourself first, <laughs> okay? So, that's going to be the theme of our program here. So, Lindsay's nervous. Lindsay's having a hard time. It's been, she's been out shopping all day. She's going to be prepping a beautiful punch for her uh, guests this evening. But, you know what? She's on edge. She's nervy. She needs to make herself a drink. First, so it's been a little cold outside. Actually, it hasn't in the Napa Valley. It's been terribly warm today. Uh, we're going to pretend that it's cold. Uh, so we want a little bit of a, bo a bone warming experience here in the form of the classic, a hot toddy. So what's a hot toddy? Basically, it's uh, classically just some booze. You can use whatever booze you want. It's up to you. It's your drink. Always remember, it's your drink. Some kind of sweetener some kind of citrus in the form of juice or zest, uh, and hot water, sometimes a little spice added. I like to make my hot toddies with bourbon. Lindsay, does that sound good to you? I love bourbon. All right, so we're going to use a little bourbon. This is not the time to break the bank on your bourbon selection. Use something that you want to put into your body, uh, but don't take down the top shelf stuff for sipping because you're going to be putting a lot of stuff in this. Now, I'm just going to put two ounces of bourbon into this for Lindsay. Um, Enough. It's enough. And then I like to use honey as a sweetener in my hot toddy. Now, the thing with honey is it's gloopy, and it doesn't like to dissolve, right? Uh, even when it's warm, you have to stir it and stir it and stir it. So one great way to use honey in cocktails, cold cocktails as well as hot cocktails, where you're going to want to measure something, is to make a honey syrup. In this case, we've taken some clover honey, mixed one part clover honey, with one part warm water, stirred it up until it dissolved ahead of time, and then put it aside to cool. What this gives us is something that's imminently pourable and also imminently measurable. In this case, we want one ounce of our honey syrup. It's really easy. You just mix the stuff together, measure side by side, pour it in another thing, stir it up, stir it up. There you go, honey syrup. Keeps for a while. Um, so we got our sweet. We want to put a little lemon in this as well, uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice. We got three quarters of an ounce in there. Now, usually in cocktails, you want to have more uh, sour or acid than you want to have sweet. But in hot cocktails, it turns out that sometimes you want to change that around a little bit and give yourself more of a sweet angle because the, the heat and also the added liquid is going to require more body. So that's why we get to one to 0.75. Now, in terms of spice, people have different things. This classically is a hot toddy already. Just add the water and then you're done. I like to add a few cloves to mine. Now, this is the easy way to do it, um, or the no planning way to do it, um, <laughs> is uh, just take some cloves, put them in there, and there you go. You got cloves. It's not going to taste very clovey right off the bat, 
Uh, but if you want to get fancy and you like hot toddies on a regular basis, I recommend you take about a cup of cloves, put them in a little pint-sized mason jar, pour two ounces of like 151, some high proof, Bacardi, whatever you want to use, yeah. uh, spirit on top of that, shake it up, shake it every five days for five days, strain off the solids, put in a little medicine dropper, and then you could have just put little 10 little drops in there, you got instant clove flavor. But I'm just assuming that you didn't do that, that Lindsay didn't do that. I would never so do she, that. She would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that, and I recommend you do it. It's good for all sorts of things, but if you didn't, you can put the cloves in like that. Now you get some hot water, and now dilution rates, it's up to you. Um, try it out, you know, fill it till it looks attractive to you, put a little bit more, taste it. If it's too dilute, you screwed up, you can't really go back that well, but if it's, if it, if it's not dilute enough, add more, or just drink it down really fast and make another one. All right. <laughs> Give this a little stir. And Lindsay, give that a little taste for me. And see how that works for you. My parents don't know I drink. <laughs> <laughs> they do now. <laughs> now, for an added little bit of aromatics, is that good? Is that good there? Does that look That's like the right potency? really potentially? good. Added a little bit of aromatics here. You might want to take a nice long twist of lemon. Put it in the glass there, twist it around. It's also a little bit more garnish. There you go. There you go. That's a hot toddy. Now Lindsay is warm. Yeah. All right. That's for you to sip on. Thank you. Because you need it. All right. Um, now, <laughs> in just a second, we're going to be getting to the main event for this evening, which is holiday punch. Uh, now, uh, the thing about entertaining for the holidays is you may love cocktails. You may consider yourself a great bartender, and you probably are. Uh, but even a great bartender doesn't want to be stuck behind a bar all night on a holiday party because it's working. You don't get to talk to people. You don't get to have any fun. When you do start drinking a lot, you just get really drunk, and you usually don't get any of the food. So single-serving cocktails at your party, not a great idea. That's why punch which we're going to see in a moment, is a great solution to uh, this event, having drinks for your or friends and family, and also, again, taking care of yourself first. But first, uh, no holiday uh, drinks thing is uh, complete without mention of eggnog. Uh, it's a classic, and it's very delicious. Um, and there are great, many great recipes online that you can look up for uh, batched out eggnog to make it home. It involves separating eggs into yolks and whites, beating them separately until they stand at end with sugar or whatever. Lindsay, you lost your drink. I'll meet you another just a second. Um, but and, and there are really great recipes on there, and I recommend that you check them out and try it sometime for your holiday party. But they don't make great TV, first of all. And second, um, they're really, they're, they're really sometimes just a pain. Maybe you're just at home one night, maybe after everybody's gone, or before everybody shows up, it's time to sneak a little something. You want to get in the holiday spirit. because You know that aunt that's negative about everybody who's coming over, and you just really need to feel festive. You want eggnog, but you just want one. You want it right then, right there. What do you do? Do you go to Safeway and pick up one of those cartons of the gloopy, like, I don't know, neon-looking stuff that tastes like Bantan gum? No, that's terrible stuff. <laughs> I mean, you may have fond memories of that from your childhood about, you know, maybe you snuck some booze and put it in there and, you know, you drank it and it was great and you got sick. But the thing is, it's, it's sickening. It's sickening in and of itself. Don't do that. I'm going to teach you how to make egg yolk right now with, like, no prep at all. Hard. Well, maybe a little bit of prep. Okay, fine. A little bit of prep. Uh, that's delicious that you can do anytime for a single serving and you can do it clandestinely. So, again, not everybody sees you making it, so not everybody makes you make it for them. Okay. So, eggnog. First thing about eggnog, it's got eggs in it. Oops, sorry, Lindsay. So you're going to take yourself an egg, the whole egg, not just the whites, not just the yolk, one whole egg. Don't worry about salmonella. <laughs> <laughs> and don't hold me accountable if you get it. Um, Your chances of getting salmonella are very few and far between, and it would have been worse. 
So I'm just going to whip that up in there because sometimes egg yolks, when you're shaking a drink, which we're going to be, they uh, require a little bit of extra coaxing. So the basic ingredients of eggnog are eggs, milk, cream, booze, and some kind of spice. One in particular, my favorite, which is nutmeg, but we'll get to that. Um, so whip that egg up a little bit, and then you're going to add a little bit of sweetness. Now, um, you could put regular sugar in there, just a little bit of super fine sugar, maybe a bar spoonful or something, and that works fine. But it, I find it much easier to make yourself a simple syrup um, because you can measure it, A, again, measuring is good, and it dissolves readily in the liquid. Um, in this case, I've used turbinado sugar or sugar in the raw. It adds a depth of flavor uh, that you don't get with regular refined sugar. Um, I've used one part regular turbinado sugar, one part warm water, stir them together until the sugar dissolves, let it cool. That's simple syrup. That's easy. It's simple. That's why they call it simple syrup. It's worth making. Um, but I've taken this a little step further because a lot of eggnog you'll see has vanilla in it. And some people's route to get there is vanilla extract, which is fine. You can do that if that's where you're at. You probably have vanilla extract around. But if you do think about it ahead of time a little bit, like with the clove tincture, you could take one vanilla bean, split it in half, scrape out the seeds, put it in 16 ounces of water, let it simmer for about 15 minutes, take it off, strain out the solids, put in your, your uh, turbinado, and you've got vanilla simple syrup, and it tastes way better than vanilla extract. I promise you that. So I'm going to take half an ounce of this vanilla simple syrup that I made, put it in with my egg. I'm going to put some cream in there. I like mine kind of creamy. Whatever. I'm going to put an ounce of cream in there, cut it down a little bit with a quarter ounce of just regular milk. And then with eggnog, as with toddies, you're really welcome to use whatever spirit you choose to use. Some are better than others, but rum, bourbon again, brandy, they all make great choices. I'm going to use a combination of brandy on the one hand. Germain Robin, an ounce and a half of that, and then this beautiful, funky, uh, navy strength Jamaican rum called Smith and Cross, 57% alcohol, um, good for the holidays, good for the taste buds, good for the heart, half an ounce of that, maybe a little bit more, um, right? All right, no, more. Okay. <laughs> going to take a uh, <laughs> pinch of uh, fresh ground cinnamon, just put that in there like that, and then Thank you. I'm going to take my uh, shaker top here, I'm going to dry shake this, that means shaking <laughs> without ice. This helps to emulsify the egg, everything in there, gives you a little bit more of volume, a little bit more of a velvety texture. Now, with whole egg drinks like this, it can be pretty difficult to get really the thick texture that you would expect from something with egg whites, but don't worry about it. It's still delicious. Do this for a while. We don't really have the magic of television here, but... Um, <laughs> but you should still not rush your egg out. I'm then going to add some ice. Not too much because I want some more emulsification without over dilution. That should do it. All right, we're going to get ourselves a glass, pretty little glass, and double strain. Now, Using my regular Hawthorne cocktail strainer and a fine mesh strainer, you can get that at any kitchen store. It helps get out all of the pesky egg solids that can sometimes come along with an egg drink. And the ice chips, which is just going to further dilute the drink. And egg, eggnog is something that's supposed to be robust and thick. Now, most important thing about eggnog, to me anyway, is nutmeg. You, uh, Take your trusty microplane here 
and just some nutmeg. I keep it in my pocket at all times just in case, um, which is a good idea. It makes everything bad. Wine, you get served some wine that's a little past the spread, grate some nutmeg on that. This is great. They used to do it in the old days. It's great. As much nutmeg as you want. That's good for me. Um, and voila, you have an eggnog that's not going to be it, take a little bit of your soul, like that stuff from the supermarket, and also <laughs> didn't take you hours to make that you have to shake, share with everybody. You can down it quick, guiltily, dirty, fast, delicious. I'm going to taste this first. Yeah. All right. Now, we have thirsty people here. <laughs> It's time to get down to business. Now we're going to make some punch. Now, I'm being a little disingenuous. We've already started making our punch. That's because there are several steps that just, it would get really boring uh, if we had to do them all live on camera. Uh, but don't, don't fret, they don't take that long. Um, now a little word about punch. Many of you may associate punch with college, uh, where you got those beautiful uh, luxury 1.75 milliliter bottles with a handle that are made of plastic, whatever kind, you don't know. Smirnoff tequila, is that, is that what that is? I don't know. Uh, you know, Yukon Jack, is, is that rum? I don't know. You get, you get whatever you get because you don't know what you're doing. Somebody else buys it for you. You bring it home, you bring a bunch of soda, canned juice, you pour it in. You put a, it in a trash bag. Yeah, you know, put it in a trash yeah. bag. This is the traditional yeah. serving method. Uh, <laughs> glacier ice, if you're lucky, you know, mix it up with a baseball bat, and you're getting laid. Um, but <laughs> as great as that is, um, that's not what we're talking about. We're also not necessarily talking about uh, you know, your mom's home uh, decor magazine punches for the season uh, that are beautifully colored and uh, perhaps contain sherbet uh, or, you know, other things like that, different cordials. We're not necessarily talking about those as lovely as they are. We're talking about punch as it existed in the olden days, before the cocktail, uh, before the day days of modern times, where people had to duck into a bar, have one drink without talking to anybody and get back to business before modern life prevented you from drinking all day long. <laughs> there was punch. Um, it, was, it, it was a pre-industrial drink. It was a drink of both the working people to some extent, but mostly of the leisure classes where people would brew up carefully brew up a big bowl of spicy but somewhat diluted libation, uh, perhaps originally because they didn't have great spirits and they wanted to flavor it, uh, but also because they wanted to share with those around them in the ritual of punch drinking. Uh, it was a great way to get conversations done. It was a great way to work out arguments. It was a great way to get drunk slowly. It was a great way to drink all day. Uh, and uh, of course, this is where a lot of our, our foundations of mixology come from, which is in the compounding of punches. Now, there's a great book by David Wondrich that came out a couple of years ago called Punch. I highly recommend that you pick that up. He's going to tell you all about it. He's going to sound way smarter than I am. He's a super smart guy. Uh, and he's going to go on and on about it, and you can read it. It makes a great holiday gift. But for right now, we're just going to do this fast and dirty. Now, we're making a brandy punch. Uh, so we've got our... Amazing silver bowl. Our nice, just the right amount of tarnish silver bowl going on right here. Oh, that means it's real. Um, and, uh, that's what we're going to use as our serving vessel. Uh, and that's what we're going to kind of actually be mixing into. But there's a step that you have to do uh, beforehand for any properly made punch. And that is called creating the oleosaccharum. What is that, Gabby? Basically, you peel off a bunch of or uh, lemon peels, and you're going to take carbonado brown, carbonado sugar, and raw peeled ginger, and muddle the crap out of it, and you're going to let it sit for at least an hour. Let it caramelize. Add a little bit of hot water, mix it all together, let it dilute, and use those lemons that you peeled earlier, and take that juice, mix it all together, and make a really awesome juicy syrup. Exactly. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. <laughs> With a very concise definition for a very funny sounding word. Um, oleosaccharum. Basically, you're trying to extract as much flavor from your citrus as possible. Uh, think about it this way. Citrus used to be very expensive. You want to get your more bang for your buck. Also, it's a great way to flavor your punch. Basically, you take a nice citrus zester. Again, it's a great thing to have. Don't cheap out at friendly cocktails at home. Get yourself a nice citrus zester that pairs a nice thin piece. So you want to get that lemon peel off of there and avoid as much as possible of this rather bitter tasting white stuff is pit underneath. Um, this is where the deliciousness is in the uh, outside here. It smells delicious. You can rub it like this. <laughs> Good. A little, a little bit of that. Throw that one away. Um, but that's, that's where the goodness is. Um, so basically you do that to several lemons um, and put them into a bowl. You reserve the lemons because there is going to be lemon juice in this punch as well. So you can juice them after. Uh, we've already done this. Magic of television. Uh, so in this bowl, well, there you go. There you go. Lots of lemon peels. A little more on the here now. Um, <laughs> got 12 lemon peels in there, actually. A little more than we needed, but we were making some other punch earlier. Um, but we paired the lemons, and then we mixed two ounces of turbinado sugar. Again, this is the good old sugar in the raw. This stuff, it's uh, brown, if you can see that. I don't know if that shows up on, uh, on anybody's screen at all, but it's, it's brown, sugar in the raw. Other ones, you just put that in there. It's two ounces per uh, lemon, and then you, again, as Gabby says, just pound the hell out of it, and it basically starts to mix up in there uh, the oils release into the sugar in a way that you can't really get them to do uh, other ways. Uh, and then you let it sit for at least one half hour. Uh, we let ours sit for, I don't know, an hour and a half. Uh, almost two, I don't know. That might have been a little too long, but it's okay. Uh, an hour is best. Let it sit in there, let the oils kind of get out of the sugar. Another thing that we did for our punch here, actually, to give a little twist, which is not traditional, we took some uh, a couple of hands worth of uh, ginger, peeled it, and as we pounded the sugar and the lemon together, we muddled those in there as well, uh, giving us a ginger-flavored oleosaccharum. Um, let that sit for a while, and then we put uh, some hot water on the top to dissolve that, and magic of television, let that cool oleosaccharum. Um, I know. I know. What do you got to do? <laughs> Low budget. What do you got to do? Um, so basically, you strain out those solids, and you're left with basically something that's a little bit like a weak, simple syrup, um, but that has all of that lemon zest in there and also has, in this case, a uh, nice ginger essence. Can you straw that? Am I, I'm, this one. I'm this doing one. this? Yeah. Not mm -hmm. that. There's nothing Not in that. there yet. So that's, that, no, straw this one. Sorry. What, what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. Just so straw this one. <laughs> Mm. That one is better, you're right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oleosaccharum. Um, so we have this here, and what we're going to do for this punch is I'm going to take uh, just uh, 18, no, 12 ounces of this guy. No, too much. Oh, no, 18. <laughs> mm. Let's do 18. People are thirsty. 18 ounces of this guy. I'm going to put it in my punch bowl. And this, that's pretty much where the, uh, the most of the work for your traditional punch uh, ends. I mean, beyond that, you basically have to mix together your lemon juice, which, you, which we juice through the magic of television. Uh, I'm going to put 12 ounces of that in here. Then you want to put in, we're going to use brandy in this punch. Uh, more Germain Robin. I just like brandy. I don't know. 18 ounces of brandy. It is this many gloves. Ounces of brandy. <laughs> A little bit of rum, so about 16 ounces, six ounces of rum. Uh -huh. 
always more Smith and Cross makes everything. <laughs> um, and then we uh, mix this together, and I'm gonna. This is normally at this point you would either dilute with water or sparkling wine, um, but I uh, can't help but uh, mess mess around with the punch a little bit more. So I brought this stuff here, um, which I did last night. Um, as I was experimenting with hot poker drinks um, with my fireplace. It was hot last night. I had to build a fire and, and make hot poker drinks. But that was a mess. Um, and so in, in order to make up with that mess, I started cooking and made a bigger mess. And what I did is I took about seven uh, Bartlett pears, peeled them, halved them, and tossed them into a baking pan uh, with some rum and water, cinnamon, star anise, uh, cloves, cardamom and allspice, bake them for about 30 minutes and then toss them, all of that, scrape that into a pot and boiled it uh, with, for about 30 minutes. So like really simple. Yeah, right? really simple. <laughs> um, let that cool, forced it through a strainer and made roasted spiced pear nectar. Um, we're gonna add that to a bunch. 18 ounces of that. <laughs> Little bit better. And then the good part. All right. All right. We're going to do 18 ounces of sparkling wine. A little Schramsberg here. Hear that, <laughs> uh, and then we're going to add a little spark, uh, sparkling water as well because the thing with the punch is it's meant to be consumed uh, over time uh, in you know it, cup after cup after cup it's not like a cocktail where you have one you're good you're feeling okay you want another you have another uh, you have three you got to think about where you have to go. Um, so, punch is meant to be a long-term affair, talking all night, again, drinking all day. Um, so, you don't want it to be too strong. Uh, that's why you generally dilute it. Now, we've already is achieved some dilution through the, actually, the pear nectar provides some, as well as the Schramsberg. A little booze in there, too, but we're going to add some sparkling water, actually, just to cut this down a little bit. We've got some pretty intense flavors here, and it's analogous actually to what you would do by shaking a cocktail, where you're actually chilling and introducing uh, dilution. And of course, dilution allows the flavors to present more naturally on the palate and be more delicious. Now, punch is an art, not a science. You say dilution? Dilution. <laughs> That's dialed in dilution. <laughs> um, but so, punch is an art, not a science. So, taste your punch. Is it dilute enough? Is it sweet enough? Is it too, is it sour enough? Let's taste it. What do you think? That's too many straws. Punchy. It's punchy. Punchy. A little bit too intense, maybe. A little bit, maybe a little bit more water. Yeah. Okay, I'll agree. Okay, we agree. A little bit more water there. And then, but you have to keep in mind that if your punch is going to be served at your party, um, you want to keep it cold. Um, so all of these ingredients were chilled to some degree, but it's hot in here. Uh, it's hot in those parties. So you definitely want to add some ice. Now, you're not going to just put, a, again, that glacier ice in here like in the, in the garbage can. You actually want to do something smart like make a large uh, cube or uh, ice item, block. Uh, block or whatever. Um, you, you can iceberg. take a quart <laughs> container or iceberg. You can take a baking pan. You can take a bunt pan. Last time we had a lot of trouble thinking of that word. Bunt pan. <laughs> um, freeze it. All right. Fill it with water. Put it in the freezer. Let it set. Run a little hot water on the. Let it sit out on the counter for about 10 minutes. Run a little warm water on on the pan. It'll fall out, and then you can put it right in there. Or you can work at a bar that imports 300 pound blocks with crystal clear carving ice every week and just cut off a little bit of that uh, and set it in there.
<laughs> the only thing left to do is stick a flag in your iceberg. And, uh, you know, let it sit a little bit and start doling it out to people. Uh, garnish. So this one. Now this is, again, this is not your uh, Day Glow Ladies Home Journal punch. Um, it's brown. Uh, it's real. It's spicy. There's no sherbet, although, you know, that mixture of the oleosaccharin and the lemon juice and sugar uh, was called shrub or sherbet back in the old days, but it's what not sherbet. I'm putting pear slices in here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm chicken it up. All right, so a little bit of garnish in there. And then, no experience nutmeg. is complete with, for me without more nutmeg. Grate some nutmeg over the top. Everybody drink, you said nutmeg. <laughs> Hey, voila, we are ready to go. Punch is served. Thank you for joining us, everybody. It's time for us to start drinking. Remember to tune in again for the next installment of the Michael Jack Pazden Show here on the Toot Sweet Social Club some Monday in January. We will let you know. And uh, in the meantime, happy holidays and a happy new year. Hey guys, come get punched. Thank you, sir. Music. <laughs> nice to be Michael. I'm sorry to spill on you. We're going to run out of cups, but... Uh, <laughs>